The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the giants and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Straight to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth, or accurately handling the word of truth. How many days more we need to be the grievous revolters of the word of the Lord, great slanderers of Bible doctrine and characters of his true exegesis. The sharers of morality is not the standard wherewith you as a believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ should perish. This great sharers of standards is what it has been designed for you to be still involving to cause that infection not to go through further. But rather it is not the infection of morality that you have to cause to show forth to this unbelieving and perishing world in the midst of this crooked and perverse generation. But rather it is the true radical surgery through the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, by the empowerment of his word, that you have to show forth what lighting it will be among the midst of this great darkness. Dear brethren, know you not, if you are staying in your own home, and if it doesn't have the power of your electrical one, what you do, if it is a night, you go back and get a candle so that you can put, that it should be shown forth a light. Nowadays, the technology being grown up, they are using inverters, a battery backup. But you cannot stay in darkness. That's the simple logic behind that. Because you do need light. Without light, you cannot manifest, you cannot look. When you are so much worried about the temporary physical life of this earth, that depending upon the economical status, people may use candle or inverters. But they cannot be in the darkness for a longer time, but they want to sh even put forth the torch in their mobile and they want to look. At least that could be an emergency relief for them. A man being so wise, so cunning, to look that he cannot survive in the darkness without the light, we, the church age believers, though we have been given the great light which has been shed abroad our heart through the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to enlighten us into the true work of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, so that we can really show forth the light of Jehovah. We can really cause the world to know the true doctrine of Bible. We can cause them to understand the importance of the word of the Lord. We can cause them to know the reality of their maximum glorification of life when they go through this protocol plan of God. But what are we doing, dear brethren? We never care the true shedding of light of the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in our work. We think we will just memorize some of the verses. They will think just going weekly once to the church, it is enough. And in fact, even Zachariah, who doesn't even know how to worship that great Lord in spirit, because to be in the spirit, it demands to be born again. And until unless you have been born again, you cannot be having that activated human spirit to be energized by the permanence of the indwelling of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And these people, they are not even equally qualified to have that same IQ which Zachary quotes in his various scriptures. And they want to say that they are also pastors. Dear brethren, how pathetic it would look for us without having the true shedding of the light of the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in our lives. We can never come back to this great and experiential sanctification which will be a progressive condition, a true level of spiritual growth. This true level of spiritual growth constantly, if you could go for filling or sin nature, for filling or for sin nature, is definitely your experiential sanctification will be retarded day by day. You have to take less than a millionth of a second to get back into fellowship whenever you sin neither by thought, word, or deed so that you have to worship the Jehovah. You have been called here to worship the Lord. The worship of the Lord is nothing but the fruit of your lips, and not only that, the holy walk of your conduct, and not only that, the witnessing of your life. And you cannot worship that Lord if it doesn't align with the essence of God. And to know and to align with the essence of God, Lord has bestowed graciously for us the completed canon of Scripture. Not only that, Lord has given the ministry, the mentor ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit as well. 
So if you're not being capable of staying in your home, if you don't have electrical power for even a millisecond and you want to put on your torch, how much more it should be that we are residing to be permanently into that greater divine dinosphere. The great divine dinosphere where it is constant light, enlightenment process of the Bible, enlightenment study to your soul, enlightenment transformation in your thinking that is metamorphomai, not metaschematizoa. The inner renovation of your thinking right from the inner attitude. When it has been given to us, why aren't we looking upon that light? But why are we interested into these useless and worthless speculations of the debates that we are going through? Dear brethren, when the natural realm teaches to you that you cannot survive without the power, how can you survive in the supernatural realm of this Bible doctrine without having the supernatural means of executing? Without that supernatural means of executing, you cannot even budge an inch in the spiritual life. And what will be the result you will wait and see at the judgment seat of Christ? Only Buddha and stubble. But dear brethren, be very careful that we are all qualified to get a greater reward, a crown of life, crown of righteousness, crown of glory. It is not to only a man who is a pastor teacher. It is not only to a believer who has been dedicated himself to Bible doctrine. No, it is for each and every believer to have this crown of life, crown of righteousness, crown of glory. And every believer has been given crown over the old sin nature wherewith he has mastered it. And in fact, even every believer by defaultly called as a royal ambassador, it is his duty to show forth the great work of Christ. And what a great privilege it is for us to understand the simple dogmatical truths under the light ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, by using rebound. And to use rebound, Lord has qualified us by calling that we are royal priests unto Christ. But then to what are we doing, dear brethren? We are not interested to learn. Neither we are capable of understanding the terms and conditions of Jehovah. Why is it? Because we neglect by grieving and squelching let get the Holy Spirit and reside in cosmos system of Satan to fulfill the lust patterns of our old sin nature, to fulfill the lust patterns of our old sin deeds. Prayer of life, lust of flesh and lust of eye. What a pathetic condition that we are going through, dear brethren, in by day by day process. Even an unbeliever wants to change his life lifestyle of pattern after a few days, and he says, Why we need to waste our time and energy in that and our health in that. After he's been severely damaged by heavy drinking, severely damaged by heavy smoking, and not severely damaged by this attitude, by by the money that he needs to pay for the treatment and he says I don't have that money to occupy so better I will stop but these believers are not capable of realizing what's much, what and how much severe damage they are doing to this own spiritual life every believer has been told not to be drunkards not to waste your time in vain glory not to be fornicators or adulterators by the time you need to be communicators of the word, every believer still requires basics to be taught by a new converted unbeliever in Christ. Why is it? For you the salvation has been given. For you the dead, great true God has been given. You have been born into that great family of a breeder of professed Christians. And you follow the church which has a great history. But then too, to qualify to the great work of Jehovah, you are not. You say, we will think of Christ after our retirement. That is what, when they get occupied into a government service, they have a retirement age, maybe probably the age of 60. Then we will think. Then later on, we will try to come and do God's work. Every believer is an ambassador. Every believer is a royal priest. Laden upon the shoulder of each and every believer through the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in his experiential sanctification, he has to go through the right process of enlightening you so that you could in return enlighten the people who are perishing without the knowledge of Christ, without the salvation of Christ. And when you are only not obedient to be thoroughly fulfilled, how can these unbelievers be thoroughly fulfilled? Dear brethren, ponder over these things again and again. For us to tell to you all is not a burdensome. 
but it is for your edification that you need to stand and you need to show forth the reality in Bible doctrine. Dear brethren, ponder over these things as we shall continue in the next day. Father, we are grateful for the privilege that was given to our fellowship with you through the word. Father, help the people to realize what is the reality of the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in their lives. Without the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, how failures and how rejected we are. Help us not to be like those grievous revolters. Help us not to be like those slanderers. And help us not to be like those corruptors of the world. But rather use us faithfully to thy word when we are faithful enough in the positive of our volition to rightly divide thy truth no matter what. The people will follow it, like it, hear it or not. Our duty is to proclaim and to get maximum glorification unto thee. Help us to keep that thy momentum no matter what it comes. I ask it in Christ's name, sovereign Lord. 